When their words are scrutinized and taken out of context, our elected officials have to remain calm. When their beliefs and faith are criticized, they have to remain steadfast. When their character is attacked, they must show grace. And when others are thinking about themselves, they, they must remain selfless. Mr. Sezik has all of these traits, and that's why I feel that he is the person that needs to be in the Senate position for the next four years. It was here as a boy talking to my neighbors that I learned, and I'm still learning at times, how to disagree without being disagreeable. Talking to my neighbors gave me the inspiration to be a lawyer, to go one day and practice federal constitutional advocacy. Politics was not a plan in this stage of life. But when Senator Doug Erickson passed away, I think that shocked many of us and surprised many of us. And I want to make a comment that we are approaching Father's Day this Sunday. And there is a family in our county. There are two girls who will not be able to see their father this year. And there is a wife who will not be able to see her husband. And so while this has been the honor of a lifetime, I accept this duty with a measure of humility and respect to all those that have come before me. My passion for law and the importance of protecting our Constitution took me to the East Coast, the other Washington. There, near Washington, D.C., I attended Patrick Henry College and studied American government. It was there that I worked for a time in the United States Congress and at the White House, and then for a private health care company. But what I've always told people is that where I learned the most was not in the halls of Congress or the West Wing of the White House. Where I've received my best education hasn't been at Camp David or in Air Force One. It has been here in Whatcom County, talking to people in the front yards of Ferndale and the backyards of Bellingham about the kind of county that they want to live in, about the kind of place where they want to raise their families. And at the end of the day, I learned this from each and every one of you, that people who love their county, people who love their country, can go and accomplish incredible things. It was here in Whatcom County where I saw my story as part of some larger American story. In this place, we see teachers and farmers, laborers and small business owners, police and veterans all converge together, all of them with a story to tell. And it was here that I learned that a skinny kid from Ferndale with a funny last name can make a difference in the lives of the people that he has the honor to represent. And I know that it's here that so many of you want to live in. You want to raise your families here and your children here. You want to have a good paying job here in this county. And I'm here to tell you this. What we have and the reason that I'm running for the state senate is because I know that what we have here is not in Whatcom County a lack of opportunity. What we have is not a lack of resources. But what we do have is a fundamental lack of leadership. A fundamental smallness in our politics an emphasis on scoring cheap political points and an obsession with the petty and the trivial. But you are all here today because you believe that we can do better as a county. Which is why tonight, on this historic evening, I would like to officially announce my candidacy for the Washington State Senate. that young people must be involved. And I know that people have questioned before my experiences. My request with you and my request with others is not that you give me a free pass because of my youth. My, my request to you is that you not automatically discount me because of my youth either. That you judge me by the same metrics you would judge anybody else by, which is ultimately the quality of my ideas, the content of my character, and my ability to execute ideas that work for the future of Whatcom County. I believe, that, I believe
believe that one of the reasons that we may get so little from our current generation is because we've come to expect so little. But I'm reminded of the fact that our nation is a young nation. And each and every time a challenge has approached, a new generation has risen up and answered our monumental challenges. So today we are called once more, and it is the time of our generation to answer that call. I've already shown you in my time in Olympia that I am a voice for you, that I will listen and learn from you, especially when we disagree. I fought for you to decrease prices and return affordability back to our middle class. This historic campaign is focused on an economy that works for all people, an economy with a supply of houses for young people, and businesses with strong industries in refining and agriculture. A belief that while the government is not the cause of all of our problems, it is certainly not the answer to all of our problems either, and that you cannot regulate prosperity. It is the belief that if we have trust in our people, if we empower our businesses to innovate, then we can afford and we can achieve a great future for our families and for our children. I believe that the government has a role, but it must get out of the way and allow us to live our lives. I do not believe that a group of politicians in a far distant capital know how to spend our money and run our lives better than we do. I do not believe that one-size-fits-all mandates dictated by one individual in Olympia without any checks and balances from the legislature that have the ability to shut down businesses and fire employees is an affordable or profitable future for Whatcom County. Yeah. These, policies, these policies seek only to divide us rather than bringing us together. I fought for you to restore public safety to a state and to a county that desperately needs it. While our law enforcement is not perfect, and no profession is, we have a duty to adequately train and to adequately fund our law enforcement to protect and enforce law and order, to take care of those who desperately need help, and to ensure that our streets are clean, our environment is safe, and we can enforce and protect our businesses and have a system of law and order here in Whatcom County where it is so desperately needed. I fought for you in Olympia to bring back accountability to a government that desperately needs it. In our schools, I believe that parents must have a voice for the future of their children, that teachers should be allowed to teach curriculum rather than being forced to teach a dangerous ideology. I believe that bureaucrats must get out of the way and our agencies must be held accountable for the money that they spend, the regulations that they enforce, and the rules that they seek to impose on all of our lives. My friends, we have monumental challenges. And I know that some of you may be sitting there right now thinking that these mountains are too big to climb. You may feel like one person alone cannot make that much of a difference. And I'm here to tell you, you're right in many ways. That's why this campaign cannot be only about me. This campaign is about you. It is about us. It is about our belief in restoring our future and protecting our values so that we can protect and defend. We can give our children the same Whatcom County in which we were so blessed to grow. At the end of the day, we owe a debt to all of those who have come before us, who dream of a better Whatcom County, who have sacrificed for us. And we must remember that as government expands, liberty necessarily contracts. There was a fellow named James Allen who once wrote in his diary, that many people, many thinking people believe America has seen its best days. You know when he wrote that? July 26th, 1775. <laughs> but America remains what Ralph Waldo Emerson called so many years ago. He referred to this country, he said she is the country of tomorrow. So we must ask, my friends, on this solemn night, what will tomorrow bring? What changes can we create? What progress can we see? Will tomorrow be a day of darkness, a day of hopelessness, or will tomorrow bring a ray of hope and a ray of sunshine? Will we have the audacity to believe that there is still good in this world and it is worth fighting for? This campaign exists to answer that question, to rise above the pettiness and answer that call. 
You know, we sang the national anthem earlier, but we forget oftentimes that the national anthem in many ways closes by asking a question. It asks whether or not that banner will still wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave. It challenges us. It asks of us a question. My friends, it is all of our task to answer that call, to answer that question, and to work to achieve a better, brighter Whatcom County, Washington State, and country for our children and our children's children. So I ask you all for your support. This will be the vehicle and the campaign for your hopes and your dreams and your ambitions and the future that you would like to see one day here in Whatcom County and across the state. So I ask you to join in this historic movement as we work to revitalize and remake Whatcom County. Thank you all so much. God bless you. And God bless the United we need to take back both House or the House and the Senate this time around to simply stop the stupidities that are going on. And we need to have a red wave. But unfortunately, waves don't just happen all on their own. No matter how stupid the other side gets, they are not going to give us, us the wave. The wave is not something we're going to ride into victory in Olympia. A wave is something we create. It takes all of us to get into the water and start the waves in order to create the red wave. We create it with every door we knock on, with every phone call that we make, with every yard sign that we plant, with every neighbor that we talk to, and with every dollar we raise to support our candidates. We already have a great candidate. We already have a great list of stupidities to run against. And we have some wonderful support coming from inside and outside this county, and we have you. I want you to look in the mirror, and I want you to realize that it's our generation that got us to where we are today. If that doesn't bring a little bit of guilt to your conscience, then we're leaving it up to his generation to fix the things that we screwed up. We haven't done our job. We didn't do our job. So now we leave it up to Simon's generation to do that, and I'm here to ask for your help. Man? Well, now it's time to ask for money, but before we do that, I'd like to tell you a couple of stories. When I jumped on Simon's campaign, I guess I talked to where are you going, Tim? <laughs> How many of you here remember your parents saying, write the thank you note? Raise your hand. Your parents say, write the thank you note. So as parents, how many of you have asked your children to write the thank you note? And as grandparents, we've asked our grandchildren, make sure you write the darn thank you note. But so few people do it. Well, I was really fortunate to have a birthday here recently. And I'm glad I did, because a lot of my friends aren't having them. <laughs> and I, and I, got a, uh, I got a thank you note from the senator. And he said, uh, Dan, just wanted uh, to know how much you mean to me in the campaign. Would not be, uh, let's see, excuse me, our campaign would not be where it is without you. From your advice, from your time, from your money, from your connections, and most importantly, your friendship. If I'm as wise, healthy, and happy, and kind as you when I'm your age, I'll be a blessed man. So I just want to let you know that for every dollar we raise tonight, the state senate Republican caucus has agreed to match it dollar for dollar. Now, let me kind of give you the lay of the land. If you look at the PDC report today, you're going to find that Simon Sepsik has raised $145,000. You're going to find that Sharon Shoemake has raised $125,000. Sharon Shoemake does not have a primary. So by the time August hits, we're behind. I can't stress that enough. We're behind. I want you to also remember that we didn't win this seat but by 45 votes last time. We cannot take this seat for granted. Jeff was right. If we don't win this one, we've got to win back five somewhere else.
we have to keep this seat. So as we start out today, we're behind in raising money, even though it looks like we're ahead. We've got a primary to go through in the next two months. That's going to deplete some resources. So we're asking you, whatever you were thinking about giving today, double it. If you don't think it's important to put our police force back on track, I followed 36 bills through the legislature last session. All of them would have made matters worse. I'm not going to sing into the microphone because I will lose votes and lose money if I do that. Uh, but I want to I want us to, to sing Aiden Happy Birthday and then we are going to close out by singing God Bless the USA. Uh, so actually, you know what, why don't you just go ahead and lead an happy, happy birthday for Aiden and we'll, uh, we'll spare everybody their eardrums. <laughs> are you sure All right, everybody, on three. One, two, three. Happy birthday. Thank you.